I'm Mike Tremblay. I'm the president and CEO of Invest Ottawa and Bayview Yards. At a macro level, speaking about Canada as a whole, what would you say are our top competitive advantages in terms of attracting investment? I think it would start with, uh, as you look at our country and how we're perceived in world markets, I like to think of uh, how we're perceived through the lens of the Edelman Trust Barometer. And if you're familiar with that one, uh, we come in one or two. So what that says is that uh, Canadian businesses are amongst the most trusted businesses in the world. So if you start there and you have a sense that our country produces a sense of trust in terms of our commercial business, that's not a bad starting point. And then if you look at uh, Canada coast to coast, we have such a a massive geography, uh, resource rich, and we have sectors of capability coast to coast. Ours happens to be tech centric and government. Uh, other cities and jurisdictions have uh, different areas of competency. Um, we are the highest educated market in the world, uh, which is sort of an interesting stat. Um, I would say South Korea is nipping at our heels, but at this point, Canada remains the most highly educated workforce on the planet when looking at those that have uh, graduate graduate degrees uh, from 25 to 64 years of age. So that actually is a fact. That's not an undeniable fact. So. These are all good places to start from. So as a, an attractive area for investment, I would say talent is always extremely important. And then having the existing book of business we have in each of the regions of the country is also very attractive. So you've got full ecosystems of capability. What makes Ottawa an attractive place for, for global investors? Uh, and what are Invest in Ottawa and other stakeholders in the regions um, uh, and in the business ecosystem doing to improve or let's say build on those strengths? Yeah, Ottawa is a very unique city in the country. So, of course, we're known as a, a government town. One in five employees in Ottawa are in government jobs. That's that's an undeniable point. But the second largest sector we have is is our tech community. We have almost 80,000 workers in Ottawa. That's outside of government that are in tech roles. There's a lot in government as well. So these are two kind of very important ingredients. And when you're in the center of a pandemic, that actually provides you with quite a bit of resiliency. Our third sector is tourism. So there's no confusion in Ottawa in, to, in terms of what our core sectors are. So what are we doing to bolster that? We're doing a lot, actually. Uh, so what you may know about our company is that we do both foreign direct investment and trade work, but we also uh, build domestic entrepreneurs. Like we help to actually entice people to look at the whole area of entrepreneurship. We have tons of programming to support their ambitions. We run a full accelerator and scale up program, and we're very vertically focused. So one of the items I'll use as an example um, here is the work that we're doing that led to the announcement of Area X.0 in October by Minister Jolie. And uh, we had all levels of government, of course, involved in that. And that really is to showcase our mobility and cybersecurity capability in the region. Ottawa, by far, has the highest density of R&D in the country when it comes to telecommunications. It's just a historic fact that, you know, generationally, we're really, really good at it. And um, at this moment in time, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. You know, good for us. We actually are in the right place at the right time. Uh, who doesn't need mobility solutions right now? Everybody does. We're on a call right now that is using it. So. When I think about it, our region is in an extremely good position. And what we're doing about it is we're trying to provide experiences where we can show vertical use case scenarios of how mobility can change the world. An example inside of that would be we actually run a 100 acre smart farm at the Area X.0 site to showcase precision agriculture. What lights up precision agriculture? Mobility. You know, who, who has the capability of, uh, with telecommunications to make that happen? Ottawa does. So that's one example, uh, but we run a full autonomous vehicle program there. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of technology available for the purposes of uh, testing, trialing, uh, proving out ideas, and it's operational fully. Uh, and so these are the sorts of things that we're working on. Talking specifically about connected and autonom autonomous vehicles or, or CAVs, CAVs, and smart city technology, um, I know that those are key focus areas for Ottawa and for Invest Ottawa particularly. Uh, why was that sort of decision at some point, the decision had to be made? Why was it made? And how do you see those sectors or, or subsectors uh, evolving in the coming years in terms as well of attracting more investment to the, to the city? The city's leaned in because they're trying to plan for the future. 
Uh, I'll use a good example of this that we're just wrapping up. So we ran an eight week project with Transport Canada, with the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario, with the city of Ottawa, uh, with a company called Easy Mile and a couple of SMEs. Uh, one is uh, Auto Guardian. They provide uh, safety technology uh, in the way they actually look like um, uh, those orange uh, smart, those own orange cones you see at a construction site, but they, they're a full sensor and uh, they have cameras and all that stuff. And we have uh, another company called RideShark that helped us to uh, arrange for things like bubble riding. So we ran a public facing um, autonomous shovel project around Tunney's Pasture. If you're familiar with Ottawa, it's, uh, it's in a government complex. So it's a very, very safe area for us to do this kind of testing. And it's connected to light rail. So when, I, I, when we tease out projects like this, you get the city of Ottawa leaned in because they're really trying to understand how the public will react to this and they want to make sure it's safely managed and, and so on. I think of it as a triple helix model. Like we, we work with big and small industry. We work with um, academia for applied research. In fact, we even had uh, Carleton university students help us be traffic marshals for the project. Uh, and, uh, and of course, government as regulators, policymakers, if you want to move a market, you got to have all three present. And, and that's what we did at Tunney's. Another very important element that we hear investors tell us is essential when they decide on a location is talent. And you talked about talent earlier, so it is available, there is high quality talent, and perhaps it goes back to the BlackBerry days and maybe even before. Um, now, we are in the middle of a, of a pandemic, or hopefully <laughs> closing in on the end. But, um, uh, you know, universities have basically been doing everything remotely, like all of us. Uh, how has that affected the ability for Ottawa, probably like other cities, uh, in attracting uh, additional talent uh, yeah. to the region? That's a great question. So uh, firstly, just a, a bit of a framework for why does Ottawa have so much tech-centric talent? And if you, you look at the latest CBRE report that was produced and put out there a few months ago, we have 11.3% of our workforce are in tech jobs. That actually is the highest in North America. That's ahead of Silicon Valley as at a density level. And we were ranked uh, in a very high placement in the CBRE report. We're ranked number three in Canada in terms of being uh, a um, very desirable tech talent hub. So these, these, are, these are things that don't just happen overnight. The reason we have strong talent in Ottawa is because we have 65 government research labs and we have 1,750 tech companies. And that doesn't happen overnight. So to support all of that, we have high production out of our post-secondary institutions. Uh, so we have some great um, universities and colleges in Ottawa. 20% of their enrollments are in STEM uh, in enrolled courses, which really bodes well for what our market needs. We have a lot of international students in normal times, obviously with the pandemic that is stymied, but in normal times, we have a fairly high proportion of our student base uh, that are coming from international markets. Why? The education is good and the city is very safe. It's a good place to send your young adult to go to school, if not if not locally. And so it's a very desirable market that way. So when I think of the talent in Ottawa, Ottawa is well positioned because of the high density of the opportunity from a uh, job placement perspective. And it's happened over a long period of time. So we produce a lot of talent, but we also have a talent team at Invest Ottawa that recruits international. It's a very successful program. It's a program that won the 2020 HR um, awards for the most effective recruitment strategy. We came in ahead of some very big names. And finally, um, if we sort of um, encapsulate everything you've told us today and perhaps talk a little bit as well about the ease of doing business, uh, what would be your message to foreign investors? Why should they invest in Ottawa versus other cities in Canada or even in North America to take the sort of what, what, what is a, a fair comparison, maybe? Yeah, um, the way I like to characterize this when we're talking to uh, site selectors or companies that have an interest in the region, we really do try to be specific. So we're, we're not Montreal, we're not Toronto, we're not Vancouver. We're a city of a million people. We like to be very specific. We're very strong in mobility. We're very strong in cybersecurity. Uh, we're building a, a strong base of life sciences companies. And what we try to do is we pr try to put together uh, big global firms together with our domestic growing firms, but also with practitioners so we can tease out projects. 
So we try to do this in a very targeted way. So what I would say to any investor is we have our sweet spots as a region and we're very focused on their sweet spots. We're not trying to be everything to everybody. And I suppose the icing on the cake to just finish this off is the fact that being close to the federal government is, is obviously good for, for corporations, especially the larger ones, I guess. It comes back to an earlier statement I made around bringing together industry, government, and applied research of academia. That's known as a triple helix model because we have big tech, big government right in our city and really strong post-secondary capability. We are uniquely positioned to play that role. And so I'm very, very proud of our city. We uh, collaborate well with other regions. Uh, we have to. We're a smaller city. Uh, so we're, we're actually quite good at it. And from a Canadian perspective, I want all of your uh, viewers to know Uh, that I believe that uh, in Canada, we should be traveling in packs to go after global markets as export. Uh, Ottawa is here to work with you as an R&D partner. That's what we're great at, and that's what we'd love to work with you on. 